Hello everyone. Welcome to Java Buddy. So this is a special series completely focusing on interview preparation. So today we will discuss about the very basic principles of Java that is the OOPs concepts. So OOPs is a very basic uh, or it's kind of you can say the building block of any object oriented programming language like Java. So uh, when we say object oriented programming so what are they or basically in the context of Java what are the object oriented programming features that are supported by Java or how Java does the object oriented programming so you can get uh, a variety of questions uh, revolving around the same thing so somebody may ask you uh, what all uh, oops concept Java has or somebody may directly say okay explain uh, this so basically like everybody is trying to point out the same thing that is what all features are supported inside the oops so there are basically four major things in the object oriented programming so the first one is encapsulation the next one is inheritance the next is polymorphism and the next one is abstraction so I will explain in detail with examples of all these things so these are the basically the four building blocks of um, object oriented programming so we'll discuss in detail about all this so first let's discuss what is encapsulation and let's do that using an example so but before going to encapsulation it's also uh, like you know and important that you understand what is a class or what is an object so you um, might be knowing that uh, uh, when we talk about object oriented programming so basically like you know everything is uh, based on objects so why so uh, so the you know the whole idea of doing object oriented programming is that means you always do the programming with respect to the object so that means here we don't uh, talk in like for example we are trying to develop uh, a functionality let's say we are trying to calculate the marks of a student so that functionality will not uh, be available in a isolated manner so whatever functionality that are related to student so what we do so basically we create a blueprint of student so what are the properties of a student and what all functionalities the student can perform so we always think it from the point of view of a object so we always think so when we are thinking of a student or let's say we are, we are thinking from uh, the point of view of a person so what we see so we can see different attributes like a person has hands legs uh, nose so these are the attributes and if we say what are the methods so he can walk he can talk so these are the methods we can say so 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 we re represent this as an entity or we create a blueprint and the object is basically every time we try to um, like you know represent that blueprint so we create an object so like in this case the student it's a class or basically the student is a blueprint you can have attributes like say integer roll number integer marks so you can add various attributes and you can add some methods like uh, sorry void uh, check grade so basically you can create a method to check the grade of, of the student so it's just an example so you can uh, like you know based on the requirement you can have a lot of uh, different methods lot of attributes so here you can see the student is a blueprint or also we call as class 
and all the attributes which is called as the instance variables are represented like this and the functionalities or the behaviors are represented as methods so this is a class and whenever we want to use the blueprint so what we do so we create objects of the public static void man so we create a object let's say student ram equal to new student so basically ram is a actual representation of the blueprint student so this is a very basic so now let's start with our encapsulation so what do you mean by encapsulation so encapsulation is basically putting all the attributes and the behavior that is all the instance variables and the methods together in a single entity so this is called as encapsulation uh, so there is also another as one more aspect of encapsulation so basically what do we do we encapsulate the so um, so we can have different some attributes that you know we just uh, don't want to expose to the outside world so a student may have several attributes so we may not uh, let's take an example and you will be able to understand it better so let's say age so age is something that uh, you never want it less than zero or equal to zero because if somebody a student uh, is getting admitted so that means definitely he has some age so it may be uh, like six months one year ten years but it should be less than uh, sorry greater than zero so how do you ex um, uh, you know um, implement this requirement so basically uh, because of the encapsulation so basically uh, you are able to implement this requirement with the help of encapsulation because you are actually encapsulating everything in a single class and then you decide how you want to expose it or basically uh, in, a, in the real time when you do programming so how you handle this requirement is you make this variable private and for setting the edge, you create getters and setters. So something like public void set edge. So here you pass the edge that to be set. So in this, you can check if edge greater than zero. And then only this dot edge equal to edge. So now your edge cannot be set directly rather the edge has to come through this method and so that you can impose any criteria that you want. So this is the advantage of encapsulation. Then come, let's come to the next feature that is inheritance. So inheritance, why it is required or why it is was special? So when we are doing programming in uh, real projects, so you will have like you know maybe hundreds of classes and there can be um, areas where you will have lot of common functionality so let's think of uh, a example like uh, let's take a car so a car can be you know it can be a generic class but you can have uh, different implementations or like you know different varieties of car for example so let's say a uh, you can have a SUV, you can have hatchback, you can have sedans inside car. So all these are basically cars. So this sedan, SUV and the hatchback, they will have the similar properties. But obviously there some attributes or like some behaviors will be different from the other. So what we can do, you know, okay, I'll just uh, do it quickly. So let's create class. SUV so let's say like it has variables in wheel plus hatchback so it also has the same wheels and let's create one method like public void drive 
This is just for example. So you will also have the similar method in the hashback class because it's a car and you basically you are going to drive it. So this you can see, you know, we are duplicating code. So in this case, it's just two lines, but in the actual project, it may be like uh, there may be 50, 60 attributes and maybe 50 or like 20, 30 methods. So you are duplicating all this code again and again. So that also creates lot of issues like maintenance issues and also uh, chances of uh, doing error. So instead, what Java provided is a really great option that instead of copying this code or duplicating this code, what you can do is you can have a parent class. So in this case, let's create a class called as car. And in the car class, put these two attributes. And let the SUV class extend the car. So this car became parent, this SUV became child. Same goes for the hashback. Now, if I try to instantiate your this hashback or this SUV class, If I try to create object of hashback and execute the drive method, let's put something in the drive like sysout or print hello. So you can see that this hashback does not have any single lines of code, but if I try to run this above code, the hashback.drive. So the drive method of the parent will be executed and hello will be printed. So isn't it amazing that okay somewhere I missed uh, what I missed. Okay. My bad. So without actually writing any lines of code, I'm able to print this. Okay. So let's go to the next uh, feature that is the polymorphism. So polymorphism, what this term means is, so polymorphism is poly means many and morph is, morph is forms. So it's like many forms. So what is exactly that? You can make um, like, you know, one... Uh, object behave differently in different scenarios so this may sound confusing but it is pretty simple so let's uh, see it in the code so there can there are two types of polymorphism one is static polymorphism and other is a dynamic polymorphism so what is static polymorphism is also called as overloading so overloading is see i can have for example like i am having a drive method but also I, uh, you know, I uh, may want to have another drive method, but this time it may take some parameter. You know, somebody wants to pass some parameter and based on that, it wants to do something. So thing is that I don't want to have a different method name. I want to use the same drive method name. So how to do that? So you can do that simply by writing a method like this. You can have the same method name, but with different parameter. But remember, for overriding, sorry, overloading, you should have the return type same. Only you can change the number of parameters or the type of parameter. So that is, for example, I can have two methods, but this I can have a string ABC. So here it was integer and here it is string. That's why the compiler is not complaining. Or even I can have integer parameter, but I need to have different number of param parameters. So I can have two parameters so that's why it stopped complaining so remember this whenever you are trying to do overloading the requirement is you should have different type of parameter or different number of parameters the return type has to be same for overloading so this is one type of polymorphism called a static polymorphism why static because this happens at the compile time okay 
the other type of polymorphism is dynamic polymorphism so what is dynamic polymorphism or is also called as overriding so in this case your suv is extending car and we are not implementing anything but what if the suv you want to provide some different kind of behavior so how you will be able to do that very simple is by overriding the same method overriding means you can actually define the same method again in your suv class and you can give a different behavior here in this case let's just print suv okay and uh, let's try to run it sorry parent is car suv equal to new suv or car car so in this case you can see the reference is of car okay that the preference is same so now if i run this the content of the suv class drive method will be printed but at the same time let me just copy this code and put it in the hasback class So notice here very carefully, here the reference is of the parent, I gave the implementation of child and it printed the child class SUV class and drive method content. Now let's say I give it hashback. So the reference is still same, I have not made any modification. But if you see here, okay. so let's print it, the output should be hashback. See, so this is the beauty or this is called as the polymorphism. That means the same car object, sorry, the same car reference is giving different output in different scenarios. So this is called as polymorphism. So polymorphism is very, very, very useful uh, concept. You will be using this uh, concept uh, very often when you are doing actual program. So if you, if you are, uh, you know, not very sure, uh, you can uh, watch uh, uh, the videos about polymorphism in this channel. So I'll try to provide the link in the description. And the last functionality or the last feature is abstraction. So abstraction as you can uh, know from, from the term that uh, abstraction is hiding. And abstraction is also called as data hiding. So what actually, uh, how actually it helps. So let's take an example you are trying to use a TV. The TV has many complex parts in the inside the TV but what we do is we have a remote and using the remote we can simply you know, increase the volume, decrease the volume, you know, change the channels or do all these things. We don't know the complexity behind the working but we just have a simple interface and, and when we are clicking something or when we are tapping a button we are able to uh, you know execute the functionality so that's what is the same in java also so you can have you can implement lot of complex functionalities but your client they may not be really interested to know how you have implemented them or even you don't really want to give the implementation to them you just want to provide them the abstract layer okay or a layer of abstraction you can keep a layer of abstraction you can keep all the complexity in your code and just provide them a basic interface or a basic uh, you know in this case like we're talking we have a remote so you can provide an interface to them using which they can use your functionalities without actually knowing the complexities okay so that is called as abstraction so there are different ways we achieve abstraction we have interfacing, we have abstract class. So we will, uh, that's like, you know, that's a separate topic in itself. Uh, but that's all about abstraction. So with this, we are completing today's uh, video. So I hope you have learned something new. So thank you for watching this video. Have a great day.